Hello, I am Alan Lilly, the Chief Executive of Eastern Health. All of us working in health today are faced with the same challenges of rising age, rising demand and rising costs. And therefore it's always important to ensure that we are using our resources wisely. Today we're going to share with you our story around the implementation of a bed audit within Eastern Health. Hi, I'm Dean Jones. Let me tell you a bit about Eastern Health. Eastern Health is one of Victoria's largest public health care providers, providing health care to in excess of 750,000 people across the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. A few years ago, the Victorian Auditor General noted in a special report around managing acute inpatient flows that demand for acute care in Victoria's public hospitals had grown steadily over the past decade, due largely to an ageing and growing population and increases in chronic illness. To manage this demand, hospitals need sufficient capacity and to use it effectively. Around 2010, the problem we sought to address was delivering timely patient access for emergency and elective presentations to our hospitals. Many at the time said the solution to that problem was to open more beds or to add more capacity to the system. At that point I was then the Director of Inpatient Access, so I was asked to uh, develop an approach to this problem and we became aware of the hidden capacity tool which was developed through the IHI and we were also at that point aware of some work done by Sir Charles Gardner Hospital in Western Australia, the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne who had piloted a similar process with a modification of the IHI hidden capacity tool. So in 2010 we adopted a modified version of this IHI tool and implemented it across the health service. What the bed audit sought to achieve was one, to provide us a snapshot of bed utilisation across the system to identify barriers to discharge and potentially avoidable delays to care progression and two, identify hidden capacity which was um, patients occupying beds who may not need that bed for acute medical or surgical treatment. What we did was send out teams of auditors across every site who visited the wards to implement our data tool. What we found was that consumed significant amount of time. As you can see here, this is data from just one site. We ended up with reams and reams of information which was required to be entered, analysed, collated. So whilst we ended up with some interesting data, there were significant questions around inter reliability and hence meaningful analysis of the data was problematic. Despite those problems, we recognised that this was an important issue and one we wanted to continue to investigate. So uh, the next year we ran a similar process, thinking that familiarity with the tool and the exercise would help us address some of the issues we found the first time around, but unfortunately it didn't. Subsequently, what we looked to do was develop our own in-house tool to help address some of those issues. We wanted it to be better, faster, less resource intensive, more reliable, and certainly one that was more engaging for our clinical teams. We developed an audit based on the logic of the WHO ICF that seeks to determine why patients are in hospital. We developed three questions to identify critical abnormalities of body function and structure. The first is, is the patient sick? That is, does the patient have physiological instability? The second question is, does the person need investigations or a specialist opinion that is only or best obtained in hospital? And the third question is, does the person need treatment that can only or best be done in hospital? A panel of nursing, medical and allied health staff used this approach in July 2014 to audit each hospital. At half hourly intervals, the nurse unit managers and doctors from each ward came to provide information about their patients. So we'll go through them one by one if that's okay. Uh, once again, this isn't a test of your um, you know, decision making, clinical decision making. It's more about us just understanding what those barriers might be. One of the auditors asked the questions. As soon as a defined endpoint was encountered, questioning about a particular patient ceased and the next patient was considered. Auditors reached consensus for each patient. There were 753 patients. In response to the question, is the person sick, that is physiologically unstable, 417 patients were identified as satisfying this criterion. 
A further 176 patients were identified as needing investigations or specialist opinion that can only or best be done in hospital. 215 patients were identified as needing treatment that can only or best be done in hospital, which left 149 patients who did not have a medical reason for being in hospital. Of these, 42 patients were due to be discharged on the day of the audit, leaving 107 or 14 per cent of patients. On average, assessing each patient's status took approximately a minute. We conclude that this simple audit can be relatively easily performed. The audit is robust and provides useful information for management. 14% of patients could potentially have had their needs met outside of hospital. This proportion is less than shown by previous audits, which suggests various system improvements have been beneficial, but there is still substantial scope for further improvement. I'm really proud of the quality improvement work which we are doing at Eastern Health and I invite you to get in touch.